In this lecture, we're going to discuss some high-level concepts to consider in order to write efficient heterogeneous parallel programs. This image shows the world's second most powerful supercomputer, which is located at Oak Ridge National Lab. The GPUs we have in our lab have the exact same design as the GPUs that are used in this supercomputer. I just wanted to remind everyone that the hardware that NVIDIA has supplied us is extremely powerful. But in order to take advantage of all of the computational performance that the GPU offers us, we need to design our CUDA programs with a few basic concepts in mind. Now we've already seen this graph in the first lecture, which illustrates the extreme computational throughput of NVIDIA GPUs. Computational throughput is measured in how many floating point operations can be performed in a given amount of time. Both the GeForce Titan and the Tesla K40 both use the Kepler GK110 GPU architecture. The difference between the Tesla and GeForce lines of GPUs is that the GeForce is designed for single precision floating point operations, whereas the Tesla is optimized for double precision floating point operations. Teslas are primarily used for very accurate computational scientific simulations such as geophysical signal processing. Our focus in this class is on the G4 series. The Kepler architecture used in our Titans have a peak theoretical single precision computational throughput of 4.5 teraflops. Computational throughput is one of the main reasons why GPUs are so powerful. But there is an equally important advantage that GPUs have over CPUs, which is that GPUs have extremely high memory bandwidth. Again, focusing our attention on the GeForce Titan, we can see that the peak theoretical memory bandwidth we have is over 330 gigabytes per second, compared to Intel's comparable CPU at 60 gigabytes per second. Memory bandwidth is simply defined as the amount of memory transferred for a given amount of time. We can compute memory bandwidth by multiplying the global memory clock rate with the memory bus width. For Titan's Kepler GK110 GPU architecture, we have a memory clock rate of 3.5 gigahertz, which is double clocked so we get an effective memory clock rate of 7 gigahertz. And we have a memory bus width of 384 bits, which is equivalent to 48 bytes. Taking the product of these two quantities, we see that our theoretical memory bandwidth is 336 gigabytes per second. We know that the Titan GPU can perform up to 4.5 teraflops, but all of this computational power is wasted if the GPU is simply waiting on the system to retrieve the data that it needs to operate on. Let's now introduce a concept called arithmetic intensity, which is defined as the amount of computation performed per amount of memory accessed. To increase performance of our program, we want to maximize arithmetic intensity. This can be done in two ways. We can increase the numerator by maximizing the amount of operations done per thread, or we can decrease the denominator by minimizing the amount of time spent on memory retrieved per thread. This week, we're going to focus our attention on the second strategy. The two most effective methods to minimize the amount of time spent on retrieving memory are 1. Moving frequently used data to fast memory or 2. Coalescing global memory accesses. These concepts will be explored further in the next lab project. Although we won't go into any detail about memory bound and compute bound problems here, I wanted to introduce these concepts 
to show how they are related to arithmetic intensity. Most problems tend to be memory bound, which means that the maximum computational throughput has not been reached due to memory access latency issues. Once the maximum computational throughput has been saturated for a specific problem, it is then termed as a compute bound problem. We will go into greater detail concerning memory and compute bound problems once we discuss optimization techniques and hardware resource limitations.